Hi and welcome to Elite Mind Academy. My name is Paweł Potosiński and this is the second episode of Modern Data Warehouse in Azure series. In the first episode, we focused on the architecture and key concepts of Modern Data Warehouse. We said that Modern Data Warehouse in the cloud is designed to store and serve any kind of vo and volume of data, potentially to all users in the organization. Today I'm going to discuss options we have available in Azure for storage and data warehouse parts of the architecture. I will point out pros and cons of different services that can be used to, for those two layers of modern data warehouse. So let's start with the reminder of what the architecture looks like. Let's focus on the storage and data warehouse uh, elements of modern data warehouse architecture in Azure. In the first episode of the series, I presented you with the reference architecture of modern data warehouse in Azure. Microsoft puts Azure Data Lake Storage and Azure Synapse Analytics in two key components of the, of the architecture. So for the, uh, for the storage and data lake purposes, Microsoft suggests you to, Azure, to use Azure Data Lake Storage. And for the data warehouse purposes, they, they suggest to use Azure Synapse Analytics. And uh, keep in mind that modern data warehouse is based on the assumption that you're going to use both relational data and non-relational data combined together. So let's see what options actually do we have for those two elements in Azure. Let's start with the storage. Why the storage matters? First of all, it's the first touch point for your data in the cloud. So in every single major cloud, doesn't really matter whether it's Azure or AWS or Google Cloud Platform, you will follow the same pattern for the analytics purposes. You will extract your data from the source systems, you will move those, this data to the uh, storage, and then you will utilize different techniques to perform some transformations and present your data to uh, analytics. Now the storage, the storage for storing all this data has to be cheap because it's, uh, it's designed to store a uh, high volume of data. So definitely, uh, the, definitely each of the major cloud vendors is, uh, is uh, still uh, improving the pricing of the, of the storage. So uh, for example, in Azure, you will see hot and hot code and archive tiers that will make uh, your, uh, your pricing of, of storage uh, cheaper every time and with archive in Azure you can achieve uh, as low cost as one dollar per terabyte per month so it's pretty pretty cheap as you can see. Um, this storage is also redundant because it is based on HDFS, um, HDFS uh, concept so uh, every single piece of data is copied three times and uh, by that it's, it's redundant. It also has uh, geo-replication features so typically you will you'll be able to uh, set up your storage in a way that uh, allows you to access your data even if a single um, region of Azure infrastructure fails. Uh, this storage is also great for sandboxing and dirty analytics and by that I mean that you can access files in the in the storage immediately after they land in, in this data lake or landing zone and so you can perform operations like uh, checking for uh, checking the data quality or reporting building your uh, your mockups uh, with bi tools this storage can also be fast so uh, combining with uh, for example polybase feature of uh, azure synapse analytics this can be the fastest way to load your data from the storage to the data warehouse and of course if you're going to build a data lake Storage is something that you will require for sure. So what options do we have in, uh, for storage in Azure? First of all, you can use the typical Azure, um, Azure storage account with blob storage options. So uh, you'll, be, you'll be storing your files as objects in the flat namespaces. And by flat namespaces, I understand that there is no concept of folders which actually um, get re actually causes that you are not going to operate with fine-grained security. You are not able to put any kind of permissions of, on folders because simply there, there are no folders. Instead of that, you will just operate with paths which, which mimic the folders, but they are not really uh, any kind of card. 
And uh, in Azure Blob Storage, you will operate with uh, account keys or shared access signatures for, uh, for uh, securing the access. And uh, shared access signature is the method that you will definitely uh, prefer because uh, it can be limited to uh, the period of time and also it can uh, limit the access level uh, to the resource, for example, to read and, and list uh, the, the, the files. Uh, Azure Blob Storage uh, has, uh, as I mentioned, uh, ways to optimize uh, the cost of, of the storage. So uh, it presents you with uh, cold and archive tiers to save money. You can also set automatic lifecycle policy to uh, to maintain your your files stored, your objects stored within Blob Storage uh, in a way that, uh, for example, you can. Uh, you can uh, move uh, your resources to cold tier after, for example, 30, day, 30 days uh, and then move to archive after another, uh, another uh, 60 days, for example. And uh, this will save you uh, money because archive is uh, the cheapest tier uh, available in, in Blob Storage. Uh, those tiers are different uh, in uh, uh, access time, uh, and also it's, uh, it's, um, it have, it, they have different they have, they have different SLAs. And there is another option, uh, the newest option for the storage in Azure, Azure Data Lake Storage Generation 2, which is a combination of Azure Blob Storage and Azure Data Lake Storage Generation 1. And uh, the difference between the, the Blob Storage and and data lake storage generation two uh, is in two uh, features. One is the hierarchical namespace, which provides folders uh, that can be secured separately using uh, permissions granted to Azure Active Directory users and groups, which makes uh, this storage definitely uh, far reliable in terms of security. And the second thing is about the optimizations for the analytics. So. Uh, big data tools or, or analytical tools will, will be able to utilize parallelized reads and writes on top of this storage. Uh, over time, the data lake storage generation tool will be probably aligned in the, from the features perspective to blob storage. So you will see uh, called and archive tiers. They are currently in, in preview, but over time they will be also uh, available in data lake storage generation tool, and that will make this storage uh, even cheaper. Even, even, even as of today, this storage is not, uh, is not um, much more expensive than uh, Blob storage. So the, the suggestion from my side, use Azure Data Lake Storage Generation 2 whenever possible for the analytics. And what's the difference from the user perspective uh, when, I, when you create the storage? If I want to create a storage, I'm just going to, for example, to portal, to Azure portal, and I'm looking for the storage storage account. So to create the data lake storage generation tool, you're following the same pattern as you normally create the storage account. The difference is that you, uh, that you have to move to the advanced uh, tab of the uh, creator and there is an option that allows you to create the data lake storage generation tool. Whenever I pick this one uh, hierarchical namespace to enabled, Actually, I'm going to create the data lake storage generation too, and that's the only difference. So, uh, nothing very sophisticated. So, data lake storage generation too for analytics. That's the choice number one. Now let's let's move to the data warehouse part of the architecture. Uh, Azure Synapse Analytics is not the only choice for building data warehouse in Azure. So, what do we have beyond that? We have SQL database. Historically, it was just a single database. Uh, and you could uh, divide different layers of your data warehouse using schemas. But over time, Microsoft created also an option called managed instance that allows you to create multiple databases in a single instance of managed service. That, re that reminds um, a bit SQL Server on-prem because it also has some capabilities like uh, SQL Agent uh, for scheduling your tasks. And uh, also, last time, Microsoft introduced uh, the hyperscale option, which fits the requirements whenever you need to scale your database beyond four terabytes of data, and you require some sophisticated um, features in terms of uh, transaction log security and the scalability of storage and compute power. So um, for big databases, transactional databases, or mixed volume transactional and analytics, hyperscale can be a good fit. 
Keep in mind that you, are, that you still uh, have an option to install SQL Server on virtual machine, but that's another story because this is the infrastructure as a service which will put a lot of effort for you uh, in the maintenance of the infrastructure. You will have to set up all the virtual networks, availability sets, as, and, and also you will have to deal with the uh, updates of SQL Server and patching of operational systems. Now, we also have some big data options, and some people will say that Databricks or AG side services can be a good fit for data warehousing. Well, actually, it is not recommended because of, uh, because of its nature. Those are tools for running some big data, uh, big data analytics that require uh, compute power, scalability, on demand, and uh, rather are not for storing relational data. And uh, you will you will quickly see the differences between those uh, those two services and relational databases, uh, especially from the security perspective. So I'm not going to recommend any of this option for running the data warehouse in Azure. Now, the, as you can see, the decision process uh, can be quite complex. Uh, there are different services available, and uh, I encourage you to visit the blog of Melissa Coates, uh, an MVP from Blue Granite Company. Melissa wrote a series of blog posts on uh, on how to choose uh, on how to check whether uh, Synapse or SQL Data Warehouse at that time is a good fit for your data warehouse. So there is a nice infographic with the guidelines guideline on how to how to pick your service for the data warehouse in Azure. I'm not going to present this uh, infographic, but just to mention this is a valuable resource. Instead of that, let me drive you through some of the answers to the, to the questions Melissa stated in her blog post. So you will choose Synapse uh, whenever you're going to build a, a data warehouse for a single company. Definitely Synapse is currently not for multi-tenancy. You, you want to use Synapse whenever you're going to build a well-formed dimensional model. So you rely on Kimball methodology, on data vault methodology, anything that creates well-formed uh, model yeah, Synapse can be a good fit. Uh, you want to scale your processing power. So, you, for example, you require uh, high, high, high power for your performing your ELT operations, or you want to scale up, uh, scale out uh, for uh, handling uh, some complex workloads, complex queries. And then uh, you have to be okay with platform as a service. So, some people will say that will put me in the vendor log. Well, actually. Keep in mind that Synapse is currently uh, just a kind of SQL database, so uh, you will still see the same patterns of migration, migration of data schema, and and migration of uh, of um, of uh, your procedural code. But on the other hand, do you really want to build your data warehouse and think about its migration to any other platform right away? I don't think so. Now, your database uh, should be over one terabyte, but definitely I encourage you to start with Synapse, even if you have hundreds of gigabytes, just uh, run the pilot and see whether Synapse fits your needs, whether you're, go whether you're able to uh, distribute your data appropriately. Um, definitely Synapse is not for transactional, uh, transactional workloads, so RPO and RTO, well, those things are uh, you can meet some. So you can meet some threshold. For example, you can create, you can create a backup point uh, just before you run a complex ETL, ELT to ELT process. But it's not definitely for uh, restoring your database to any point in time. You definitely want to use ELT approach instead of ETL, known from the on-premises world. So you first extract the data, load it uh, as, as quickly as possible to, to your uh, storage, and then uh, using Polybase to Synapse. Uh, so this is the fastest way of loading the data. And then transformation occurs after loading the data uh, to your cloud infrastructure. And uh, definitely, because of the nature of Synapse, you have to manage skills, um, uh, skills uh, that will put you in the MPP, massively parallel processing world. So uh, you have to be familiar with uh, concepts of distributions, 60 distributions uh, per, uh, per each Synapse environment. You will see the data distributed among 60 distributions, and those distributions will be kept in a different uh, different number of nodes whenever you scale synapse um, uh, synapse environment 
So data skew is also something worth mentioning. You will, you will deal with that uh, a lot in Synapse. So uh, concepts of, of hashing tables and, and uh, stuff like this. If you don't have the skews on board, uh, well, um, you, can, you can either grab it or uh, Synapse may not be a good choice for you. And uh, the, the last but not least, uh, at, at the moment, Synapse is not designed to handle workloads uh, of uh, high concurrency. So to name it, you have a limit of 128 of uh, concurrent queries uh, in, the in the data warehouse. And if you go beyond that threshold, you will see your uh, queries queued. So uh, keep in mind of this limitation. Now, Synapse has some, uh, some bright future on the way. Uh, the roadmap uh, Microsoft presented last year at Ignite is quite, quite um, uh, interesting. So uh, Synapse will become over time the central point of your analytics in Azure. And by saying that, I mean that you're going not just to uh, keep your relational data warehouse in Synapse, but also you'll be able to ingest uh, the data into your data lakes and, and into your relational data warehouse. You will be able to prepare your data using, uh, using some sophisticated uh, transformation framework. You'll be able to analyze your data right away. It doesn't matter whether data uh, is stored within the relational engine or in data lake, that, that will be just uh, uh, seamless. And also you'll be able to serve your data using high concurrency support uh, on-demand databases and build your Power BI dashboards and reports within Synapse and put it in your Power BI tenant. And you will be not limited to just SQL language as you are today within Synapse, but also you'll be able to leverage your Python, Scala uh, or .NET uh, skills to operate uh, with uh, big data on, on Synapse. So definitely something that is uh, uh, very, 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 very powerful. And uh, just to give you a sneak peek on how this uh, Azure Synapse Studio will look like, uh, probably in the future, uh, that that's uh, that's how Microsoft presented it uh, last year. So um, as you can see, the the, the environment is is uh, giving you central overview of your whole analytical process from the ingestion of data, loading it to your uh, storages uh, through exploration and analytics up to visualization and uh, presenting it in a visual way. And uh, you will be able to access not just relational databases, but also your data lakes. And you'll be able to uh, query your data lakes using native SQL capabilities. So uh, just just right click on your on your data lake parts and you're just uh, you just grab SQL script to um, to query the data, and uh, and you can run it on the compute power on demand, and uh, you will operate not only with the SQL scripts but also with notebooks that will um, that will encapsulate uh, the code from the different languages Python, Scala, C sharp, Spark, SQL. So mix of languages, uh, mix of different uh, different uh, things you can do with data. Uh, that's Synapse in the nearest future, pretty much exciting. Now, moving to SQL database, if you're going to, uh, uh, if, you're, if you're not going to use Synapse, Azure SQL database is the next platform as a service uh, option that you can leverage. And historically, uh, the simplest way you can start with Azure SQL database is the single database. Uh, I would not encourage you to step into DTU, um, uh, DTU uh, scalability because database transaction units, they do not correspond well to your on-premises world. Uh, it's better to operate with v virtual cores, V cores. Uh, they translate uh, nearly one-to-one -to, -one to what you what you see in your on-prem uh, visualized uh, infrastructure. Uh, so uh, you just pick the number of cores, uh, of, of course, that uh, the database can scale up to and, and you run the database. That's number one choice. Uh, in a single database, you can, um, you can build your data warehouse layers using schemas, and that's the number one solution. Over time, Microsoft presented uh, uh, some serverless approach to, uh, to this single database. 
and you right now uh, you can create a serverless from that scales automatically from 1 to 16 v cores and it also has some auto nice auto pausing and auto resuming capabilities so it can, it can auto pause after several minutes of inactivity and then resume after uh, after the next query comes in, to the to the database now the the service tiers uh, that microsoft presents uh, are different from the IO perspective. So from, for uh, general purpose uh, tier, the premium remote storage is used. Uh, this is the slowest one. Uh, for business critical, local SSDs can provide you significant improvement from the transaction log perspective. And hyperscale is something that uh, definitely serves the best as the, uh, as the transactional, uh, transactional high, high demand, highly demand uh, workloads. And uh, also, it can uh, it can be an option for mixed workloads when you mix OLTP with analytics. Um, I would say the, using this for for uh, for data warehouse is a is a matter of uh, give it give it a pilot and uh, see whether your workload fits fits this um, this um, this tier. Remember that hyperscale cannot be reverted to any other service tier of SQL database. So once you create hyperscale, there's no option to move to business critical or general purpose. If you're, if you're familiar with uh, SQL Server, then managed instance is something that can be also in your interest because managed instance presents you with a way of creation of multiple databases within a single uh, instance of uh, managed uh, service in Azure. And also it presents you with some uh, features known from SQL Server, like for example, SQL Agent for scheduling tasks. So this is probably the choice, the choice uh, that uh, will fit uh, the requirements whenever you want to move uh, to the environment that is, that is as, 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 as similar to SQL Server as possible. Now, uh, how, how this uh, configuration of uh, different service uh, and compute tiers looks like from the user perspective. So whenever I want to create SQL database in Azure, I just look for SQL database. I create it using, um, well, I have to pick the server. So I just uh, enter the name of my database. Let's create the database. And also I have to create a server. I'll give a server a name. SQL MDW, for example, I give my admin login and password. And I, of course, I have to pick my region uh, for my server. So those options I have to deal with when create a new server, logical server for storing my SQL database. Now, I hope I hope the server name is available. Mm -hmm. And now the crucial choice is the compute and storage, which is the last option on this card, but is definitely uh, one of the most important options I am going to cover. So. You can see that uh, service tiers uh, are here, general purpose, business critical, hyperscale. Uh, the, only, the only option for which serverless option is, uh, is uh, accessible is the general purpose. So with serverless, you will see uh, that you can specify maximum number of vicars, minimum number of vicars, and the auto pause delay, uh, just to make sure that your, that your service will auto pause after some time of inactivity. With uh, Business Critical, you don't have this option. You just have your uh, vCourse scalability. Uh, this can be changed over time. And with Hyperscale, the view is just as uh, within Business Critical. The only additional option is this warning that uh, warns you from creation of Hyperscale whenever you consider uh, moving back to any other service tier. Keep in mind that this, that this is not possible. Hyperscale remains Hyperscale. Uh, forever. So uh, one thing about this Azure SQL database option uh, that you definitely want to keep in mind is that none of these uh, service tiers have polybase built in. So you will not be able to leverage the, uh, the uh, seamless combination of your 
relational data and non-relational data, semi-structured data. So uh, definitely this will limit your capabilities in terms of uh, running modern data warehouse. You will just have a separate data warehouse and uh, data like uh, elements of your architecture and you will you will probably use different tools to uh, to uh, combine the data from your data lake with the data that is stored within your data warehouse that's an important one you just you just have to keep in mind there's no polybase in azure sql database by the way so let me summarize this Number one, number one storage. Uh, definitely, I would encourage you to go with Azure SQL Data Lake, uh, Azure Data Lake Storage Generation 2. Uh, whenever you want to run the analytical workloads, uh, use the use the full potential of this uh, storage, which is designed specifically for analytics, as well as the security features and uh, being able to run uh, folders and uh, permissions on folders. And for data warehouse. Keep an eye on Synapse Analytics. This is definitely growing and uh, it's, it has extensive roadmap. So uh, just watch watch the announcements. I'm, I'm pretty sure this, this will be number one for the analy analytics in Azure. Microsoft uh, presented some bold statements and at Ignite and definitely they are uh, looking for, uh, forward uh, to, to bring some bright future to this service. And if, if Synapse Analytics is something that uh, does not fit your requirements at the moment, you will, you will be able to use SQL Database or SQL on virtual machines. Also, if you're running Synapse uh, for, your, for your data warehouse uh, right now, uh, Hub and Spoke uh, architecture is something that you should definitely consider to maximize the concurrency. So you will cover Synapse Analytics with additional services like Azure Analytics, Analysis Services, or Azure SQL database uh, just to uh, store business model or, uh, or data marts and achieve bigger scalability from the um, number of users perspective. So that's actually the options you have for storage and data warehouse in modern data warehouse in Azure. As you can see, a modern data warehouse in Azure can use different services for storage and data warehouse layers. In general, we suggest to use Azure Data Lake Storage Generation 2 for storage and data lake purposes and Azure Synapse Analytics for Enterprise Data Warehouse and the center of trusted data for the organization. But remember that if your data is too small to use Synapse, you still can benefit from the architecture by using Azure SQL Database of appropriately chosen pricing tier to serve as a data warehouse. I hope you, I hope you enjoyed this episode in the next one, we will focus on the logical uh, data organization of the data lake. So stay tuned and subscribe our channel. Thank you. Mm -hmm.